If we were doing this poster session in real time, this is where it would be over, over to you to do some work at the moment. So it's for you to consider how to put the theory into practice. So first of all, I would ask you to talk to us about your poster. Um, as we're not doing this in real time now, then maybe you're able to share your ideas with colleagues in class, um, maybe on your uh, virtual learning environment sites, uh, or feel free to tweet uh, your colleagues as well and copy me in if you want to. So it's great to be able to talk about your ideas and to thrash them out. If you're not too sure how to refine your ideas down, look back on the Spark page and there's a button link to one of my other Sparks. And that one is on uh, writing dissertations in sexual health. There's a little video on there that talks about mind mapping uh, your ideas and then taking a, a helicopter view, an overview of it all to see exactly which area you want to focus in on. You also need to consider what type of audience will be at your conference. Um, is it an academic or a professional conference? Is it people from the same field of practice as you? Or maybe are you speaking to people in various specialist groups or maybe wider into generalist groups? So that's important as well, as is um, the language that's going to be used there, especially if you're presenting in places where um, your own language may be a second language to others. And then once you've decided on who's in your audience, you also need to consider whether your presentation is for yet another audience, an audience by proxy. And by this I mean, supposing you're doing a demonstration at a, a particular conference, say a conference for school nurses, but if your poster or your presentation is ideally suited for the young people that those school nurses are caring for, so a secondary audience. In an earlier video on this Spark page, I mentioned to you something about the wow effect. Well, the wow effect might even uh, boil down to what sort of eye-catching headlines you're going to use on your poster. So as people are walking by, what are the headlines and the images that will draw your audience in? This poster from a student is a really great um, example of what I've just said about drawing in your audience. So say, for example, if you're working with old people or older people, you might think, oh, look, this is going to be something about them and swimming or exercise. And um, it's asking you a question and it's tempting you in by asking a question. So you're not too sure what this is going to be on. Then once you're drawn in to read further, look what it's on. This is talking about sexual infections in old people. And this post has obviously been made for older people themselves. Maybe really great to put up in a general practice setting. So the headlines are just a few bullet points and they're really large so they can be seen at a distance. But look at the takeaway message at the end of the poster. So you'll walk away with some really uh, positive notes from this. And depending on the type of conference or the style of conference, uh, the, the organisers might already dictate to you how many words you have to use and whether you're allowed to use graphics or what sort of graphics. So you, just like doing assignments at university, you do have to follow the guidelines perfectly uh, to be accepted to present your, co uh, your poster at particular conferences. And this will depend then especially how you're going to use language and what you're going to do. Of course, this poster would have been printed on size A0 paper, and therefore the font size would have been easy to read um, in reality. As it shows here, it's fairly small looking. But you can see this has been designed for an academic conference where a certain word count was required and certain headings and sections. But the student has still managed to get in a few graphic images, so it's not just all text. Whereas this poster is totally different. Obviously, it's made for um, a very di different audience. And I would suggest that this poster, when you see the whole thing, this poster might have looked really good um, above the urinals in motorway service stations. When men are standing there having a wee and they're looking up at something in front of them, this is the message they might take home with them. Here's the poster in full. You can see it is made for quick reading, um, short takeaway messages, and it's just bullet pointed and in large print. 
This poster was actually made before QR codes were invented, and I would suggest if it was being made now, it would have been brilliant to put a little QR code on here so that someone can scan it in with their smartphone and it would take them straight away to a relevant website. And there are some good practice do's and don'ts, some particular rules that you will need to follow, and of course one of them is to do with copyright issues. So the student who made this poster didn't want to breach any copyright, didn't want to download any images from the internet, and she was actually working in a sexual health clinic and found that she had some condoms that were due uh, for the expiry date. So she took them out, put them in a little pile like that, and took the photograph herself. So if you take your own photograph, you don't have to worry about copyright issues. If you need an image that is definitely copyrighted, there are ways around it. Here are three important tips for dealing with copyright. The first one is, supposing you see an image on the internet that's definitely the image you want to use, but you notice it's got a copyright uh, disclaimer on it. Well, you could all, always uh, contact the copyright owner and ask for their permission. Assure them that the, you're not using it in a negative way and then keep evidence of the response they give. If they want to charge you, don't bother. Another tip for dealing with copyright images would be to use Creative Commons license images, just as I'm doing throughout the, this presentation. So if you just Google Creative Commons images, you'll find those that are copyright free. And usually you are permitted to use them, especially for educational uh, um, reasons and as long as it's not for profit. The final way to get around copyright, take your own photographs. And of course, especially in healthcare, there will be lots of ethical considerations that we have to consider uh, when uh, uh, presenting posters at conferences. So that could be from the point of view of not using images of patients or clients without their uh, approval. That's one thing to consider, but there are lots of others as well. Just as with this particular poster. Now, the student that did this actually made it to show at a conference of midwives just to get them talking. And she guaranteed them all that she would never put this up in a service area. So clients or patients would never see it. It was just for um, peers, for professionals to discuss it. The black text isn't very clear, so I wouldn't have gone for that. But the, the blade image, the reason why the student chose that was because in the year that she was actually showing this poster, there was a lot of media attention about knife crime and headlines in newspapers talking about knives or blades. So she wanted to play on that theme to use it as a motif. And even though this created quite a strong reaction from her audience, some people even being offended, she was trying to go for the wow factor, but not to offend, but said this is a topic that is controversial. And the final set of tips here, first of all, put your name on your poster as well. Make sure that everyone is included if it's a group of you. You may have to put your name on there, your job title and even your student title or your studies title. So show that you're affiliated to particular universities and the work that you're doing. You may need your qualifications, but put contact details as well, such as email and Twitter and in the logos from your employer and place of study. Thanks for listening. There are a few more resources back on the Spark page.